Hey everybody, looks like we made it to yet another Wednesday. So, hey, brothers and sisters, moms and dads, friends, grandma and grandpas, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this Wednesday, November 11th, Veterans Day. It's very important. And thank you all the veterans out there. I really appreciate it. So we have Mike and we have Roy. So cool to see you, Willie. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, so let's see who else we have. Uh, John, how's it going? Good to see you. So everyone is here. So great, Patrick. How are you, my friend? So Roy is uh, working with me. He's doing some incredible work and just you got to see Roy's work one of these days. Uh, he's Color Graphics 49. So that's very exciting and so really shout out to him for the great work. And okay, so a little one gallon tank, four cylinder for airbrush. Okay, that's cool. All right, and Mike S says trying to breathe, stay awake, sinuses. Oh man. So pace yourself, my friend Mike. Just take care of yourself, okay? And so here we are. This is part six, so we're getting pretty close to the end of this, right? So that's that's always exciting, kind of ramp up to it, you know? Uh, so stay tuned. Tonight or tomorrow, I got an itchy nose. I don't know what's going on with that. Tonight or tomorrow, I'm going to do a video on organization of our drawers when we are airbrush artists because you know pens and erasers and everything like that before you know it everything's all over the place and you know by looking at my live streams you've seen some of my tables were not exactly the neatest things in the world am I right definitely not so uh, let me see if I could show you real fast how things have progressed so I'm just going to move the camera. Whoa, okay. How's the sound and everything, guys? Pretty good? So you see, I'm pretty organized right now. Everything is uh, in its place. There's a place for everything and everything in its place. So that is uh, where I am today. So I'm sort of evolving from Oscar Madison to Felix Unger. And talks amongst yourself because I will be right back. It'll just be two seconds. Got to blow my nose. Okay, he's back. All right, thanks guys. Just had to blow my nose and we are in good shape, so that's good. So who else we have here? Monty, how you doing? All the way from South Africa at 4.30 in the morning. What an honor, thank you for coming. And Mike, De Mike Deloach, good to see you. How are you today? Steve Leahy's here, so that's exciting. And, oh, thank <laughs> Neat that six month thick mind. You know, you're not far off, my friend. <laughs> and then we so we have Brad, that's cool. And so this is great. We have a nice group here today. You know, it's like twelve or twelve hundred people. I would rather have twelve people who are really involved and are really passionate than twelve hundred looky loos. So Everyone who is here, they're meant to be here, so I'm glad you're here. So here we are, part six. Wow, part six. Just just last week we were part five. <laughs> so let's go ahead and make this happen, guys. We'll just move this down. There we go. All right, all right. So now, oh, let me see if I can get that picture up for you so you can see what I'm working off of. Nope, that's not the one. That was a, a different project. Let's see. Where is she? Um, 
I can I can find her. Watch this. Uh, pa pow! There we go. Look at that. So, and then I'll. That was a project I was doing with a wonderful five-year-old artist. She's just so amazing. You know, kids can do anything. You know. Let's see if I. Okay. So now there we are. We're cooking with gas. So you can see we're getting there, right? We're we're getting. Hey, David, good to see you. How are you, my friend? So that's so great. Ah, oh, thanks, Roy. I really appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Um, very talented artist, Roy is. Oh, my drink. Not as interesting as Steve Leahy's drinks, but this is actually a concoction. Let me go back. This is a concoction... It is, uh, it's bananas, strawberries, milk, some chocolate syrup, and spinach, and it's really good. You know, I don't always get my vegetables in during the course of the day, so I try and get them in any way I can. In my Extreme Patriot 105, which is not the Patriot you would get if you ordered, this is totally modified by me, myself. And so we have the medium mixture in here and it's we're just going to go back and forth with the hair. So that's what we're really going to be doing. Oh, so that's just working hard and hardly working, David. <laughs> oh, thank you. Willie says she looks great. And Mike says he'd rather have rum and coke. Well, definitely, you know. See, this is long-term benefits, right? And the other stuff... Well, that's short-term benefits, I guess, right? I guess that's how it works, you know? Hey, Chris, good to see you. How are you? So glad you made it back. <laughs> so, okay, so now I got to get my, I need to get my reference up. Pure Ref, highly recommend it. If you haven't gotten it yet, please do. You won't want, you'll wonder how you got through life without it. Trust me. Okay, so, so now what we're doing is we're working on her hair. I have the medium mixture in here, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to get rid of any kind of contrast that doesn't belong. And right here, the contrast or the values between here and here are very, very close to one another. So I'm just making them close to one another right now. See, because it's one thing to get the... Uh, values and everything but you have to have the value relationships and as well as the edge work and everything else like that so we got my my famous glove not as famous as Michael Jackson was with his glove and I don't want to get into Tito right now I know I, <laughs> I opened that on its nest but Tito is alive and this is the uh, Mike my, my own Michael Jackson glove so, Raul, how's it going? Oh, the reference software is Pure Ref, P U R E R E F. It's fantastic. Go on pureref.com, I think, or .org. And uh, if you have any questions, you email me when you download it. And let's see. I did save him, I did save Tito. <laughs> So, Tito's safe and sound. That's good. And then what we're doing is we're just calming down the hair here. Everyone used to say, take it down a notch. I'm saying, take it up a notch. I'm like, take it down a notch. So that's me, you know. A little bit different, but the same. Yes, hair. Hair is always... Is uh, hair is like not as hard as you think, but more advanced than you could imagine, right, guys? That's that's hair. It's very advanced, and it's something that you have to take your time. Like right now, I'm just taking my time. We're chilling out and talking, but there's no way I have an ETA as to when this hair is going to be done. Nor do I care because. With hair, you have to stick with it, you know? You have to make sure that you're in it for the long haul and you're gonna keep going until you get it, you know? 
Oh, thanks, Steve. So, so glad you're here. So, Steve finished his A10 Warthog. Amazing. Just, uh, just in time for Veterans Day here in the States. So, that was really great, Steve. So, great job. And I like what you did with the uh, flag behind it. That was excellent. So, here I am with the medium mixture. And just softening things up. You know, she has blonde hair, so our inclination is to, okay, quick, you know, let's make sure that we, uh, you know, make those blonde hairs really light. But, you know, uh, yes, that is true, Chris. He is the master. That's for sure. Yeah, that warthog was amazing. Thank you, uh, David. It's, and you're a part of that group, so that's fantastic. So right now I'm just looking for the overall tonal structure. Now what you want to do is squint your eyes. And when you squint your eyes, you'll see uh, the large shapes and how they interact with one another. And then you can actually start to see things that just don't belong, you know. And then that's when you start getting rid of that. And it's funny because you see a lot of things that may be off you didn't realize. And remember, whatever we do on this side, we got to make sure we do on the other side. Not always the exact, you know, thing, but the, you have to put as much attention on both sides. It's very, very important. So make sure that happens, guys. And let's see. So, okay. Right over here. We'll just calm this down. We can always go back in with the eraser. We have plenty of time. There is no rush. So one of the things you wanna watch out for with hair is always watch out for anything being equidistant and the same size. You know, in, in nature, organic shapes are always irregular to one another. It's very rare that you'll see any kind of, of uh, pattern. There is a pattern, it's different. It has to do with a whole different equation, uh, but as far as, uh, you know, like the way bricks are or patterns on a scarf or something like that, that only happens in man-made objects. It doesn't happen in nature. So you want to make sure you stop that inclination of trying to make everything equidistant and the same size. And that goes for things like air, uh, eyelashes and uh, hair and teeth and all that thing, toes, you want to make sure that you look for the uneven spaces because that's where you're going to find, you know, the reality of and the character of it, you know? <laughs> yeah, the, 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 uh, the cheers group, that's pretty funny. So we're just going to concentrate on the hair. So let's move on over to the other side and see what we can do there. Okay. So now again, squinting my eyes, taking my time. I don't really care how it comes out. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it is counterintuitive. You know, you don't want to worry about how the hair is coming out. You want to paint the hair. You want to look at the hair. And you want to see it for the forest. So once you get the forest down, then you can get the groups of trees and then individual trees. Meaning the hair is a mass, the groups of hair traveling together, and then finally individual hairs in that succession. So it's, it's sort of a erratic, pragmatic approach that I find the best way to do hair is to literally take your time let me get my freehand shield out. 
Pow! There we go. And then we are going to use it. No, where was I seeing the freehand shield? Okay, right here. And take your time. Never any rush. Crawl along the surface. So it looks like in Jersey they're going to close the gyms. I am weeping. And uh, so I am looking into getting a home, some home weights, you know. And I hope I'm able to find it because, you know, it's just not good for my psyche not to work out and be in shape. So it's a pretty, pretty hard time. I'm going to go to the gym while I can, but right now it just doesn't look good. You know, all the new cases. And there we go. Smooth this out over here. See how I'm going back and forth, moving around? I'm not worried about one little area just yet. I'm looking at seeing something. And let's say I put in a value here, and then I see this value continues up here and then we have the same thing going on over here and then we just move around so now you can see it's like okay I see this value I see it over here so I can move back and forth just like so Wow Ohio's on the verge as well and and now Brad's on lockdown and my UK friends are on lockdown. Yeah, order your library books now before the library shut down. This way you'll have good reading material at least. So you see I'm working a lot in the medium mixture here today. Part 6, that's normal, right? Part 6, medium mixture is usually you know what's happening one second rule all your answers to everything is in your reference it's not so mysterious after all you know and as long as we know it's it's in the reference and we're going to continue with that. This is the knock. I think it's the 3.8 by Mono. It's really great. It's really very soft. And you're able to do some real subtle erasing here. And it's very smooth. It doesn't really uh, dig into the surface at all, which is really fantastic. So highly recommend this knock eraser. Hey, Wendy, there you are. Great to see you. How are you, Wendy? Hey, Bill Sneegan, how are you? How's everything going? So great. Wow, Steve Leahy. Thank you so much for that. You are the best. So Steve Leahy just with a very generous. I really, really appreciate that so much. More than you know, my friend. So thank you so much. And... So this is, uh, you know, I'm glad Wendy's here. Wendy's here to kick butt, as always. Right, Wendy? <laughs> the live streams are always better when you're here, Wendy. Everyone knows that. And I know, you know, everyone, you know, every one of you guys and girls, I mean, you guys are so important. And I look forward to you. And when I don't see you, I'm kind of bummed. So... So if you guys can, come to my live stream. It's, uh, you know, you guys have become a big part of my week. So I just want you to know that. It's really about just giving, you know, and you guys give back, you know, with your time and your encouragement and, you know, it's just, it's nice. So, so if you guys know about my YouTube, I mean, my Facebook, there is a YouTube video I want you to see uh, it's really incredible talking about you know how with the internet you know artists are able to give back whether it's a musician a writer singer you know they're able to give back which is really amazing you know 
uh, in ways that, you know, they weren't able to, except, you know, you know, after the advent of celebrity and stuff like that, now artists can really intimately give back and that's fantastic and it also allows people to give as well which is really fantastic so one of the things that she did was that she gave uh, her music away she became a successful musician and but she would ask her you know the people if they could help her when she needed it and she did a crowdfunding i think she wanted something like uh like thirty thousand dollars and ended up with like over a million it's just what i'm saying is is that people are really appreciative of genuine genu generosity right and i think that's uh really was wonderful to see and it's true you know people do give back you guys have been given back and and that I appreciate so much. So anyway, so we're still working on the hair, still moving around, moving about. And you see, I can get a little more, uh, a little more specific here. Wow, Bradley, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Wow, this is a, such a great day, guys. Wow, yeah, I'm really honored. I'm honored for your time, most than anything, and honored that, you know, you guys, uh, you know, did that for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. And I'm floored, flabbergasted. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So a new video coming up. And that's on an organizational thing. And I got some of that information. Some of the inspiration came from Brad. So new video tomorrow. Look that up. It's on this Facebook, uh, YouTube channel. And that's going to be exciting. I think you guys are really going to, guys and girls are really going to enjoy it. Because I got it at the dollar store. And it was an incredible, incredible uh, pickup at the dollar store. And I think everyone could utilize this in your studio so stay tuned for that probably after this uh live stream i'm gonna go ahead and edit the video real quick it's not gonna be a pretty one but it's gonna be an informative one i do have some pretty videos coming up you know doing some new technical stuff i've been learning with my video editing software which is really fantastic so Wendy is trying to sell her fragrance oils and trying to order a sofa, but I got find someone with a truck. So, okay, Willie. So, Willie's going to say he, you can fill up your fragrances in his truck. <laughs> uh, triple cake fragrance. Oh, man. Wow, Chris. Thank you, my friend. That is beyond generous. I appreciate that. That is... Thank you, thank you. That is really great. You guys are just, you know, really flooring me today. I, I am totally floored. I just want to say, you know, I'm speechless. And for me to be speechless, that's really unbelievable. So, <laughs> and look at that. Hey, Bill, Bill Kennedy, good to see you. So... Bill is on, uh, Willie's on his way to put all those fragrances. That must be a lot of fragrances to fit in that cup, huh? And so, yeah, a good GSI video on that, Bill. That was pretty cool. Great job. So that's one thing I never explored, you know, those big sprayers, you know. Um, still just a regular airbrush guy. I haven't got into the spraying yet. But I'm learning from you, Steve Leahy and Bill and everyone. You guys are helping me out. Unbelievable. So you're going to put 300 fragrance oils on Willie's truck? Oh, my God. That's going to smell amazing. Well, maybe if they all, you know, you can have too many good smells coming together, creating a bad smell. Bradley, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Wow. So great. You guys are just amazing. Just out of control. <laughs> That's so cool.
cool. That is so cool. So yeah, Bill says he needs to varnish stuff. And I know, Steve, you use it. Am I right? Steve uses that. Uh, he uses the, uh, the spray guns, right? And forgive my uh, lack of knowledge into that part of the airbrushing. But uh, I know you do it for varnishes, right? Is that true? Mike says he's not into body oil, but he liked in body oils, but oh, okay. Oh, look at that. Okay, then uh, let's see. Steve Lay, he says yes for the clears. Very cool. See, guys, check out Bill Leahy's live streams Monday at 6. You won't be sorry. They are really great. I learn something new every week. And uh, everyone else says the same thing. Uh, the way he prepares a painting and utilizes, uh, you know, a lot of different materials is just masterful. And by watching his videos, my art has gotten better. I mean, by watching his live stream, my art has gotten better. So I know that's the same sentiment. Hey, Hillbilly! Hillbilly Abel, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, so cool. So thank you so much for watching the videos. I really appreciate that. And yes, you'll love Steve. Steve's are out of this world. Uh, he does these really small paintings, but you would swear by the detail that it's really big, you know? And then when you look at the last painting, he did an A10 Warthog on literally, like on a dog tag. That was like, wow. And everyone looks at my work and says, Tim, you're working really small. I'm working eight by 10. But no, I definitely tip my hat to Mr. Leahy over there. And uh, Bill Kennedy's doing some real incredible stuff on his channel, uh, talking about a lot of really good topics, such as, you know, a, a, uh, a Creo spray gun, right? And that's really exciting, you know. Yeah, <laughs> the five by sevens. I do like five by sevens in the sketchbooks, right? You guys do that too? I really enjoy that a lot. Yes, Bill hit 2,000 on his subscribers on YouTube. Fantastic. That's always great. Oh, you have, oh, you have a, other big straight spray guns. Wow. Well, my biggest nozzle is really on my Vega 0. 0.5. That's it. Nothing bigger on than that, you know. But these guys have been painting a long time, so they know. And that's good, you know. I'm a specialist, right? I'm a very specialist. I decided to do one thing really well and help out a lot of people who have been having trouble with a lot of things such as, you know, let's face it, you know, how to reduce and tip dry and clogging and everything like that. But with this technique I came up with, it really is amazing, you know. Uh, it really helped a lot of people and Oh, wow. Brad says that my video quality for the live streams is second to none. Thank you, my friend. That means a lot. I work so hard on it, you know. And, you know, watching a lot of videos and always upgrading my equipment when I can to, you know, keep up with, with everything, you know. So this was an interesting photo. When I decided to do this painting, the whole thought process was that I was going to work on a photograph that wasn't necessarily perfect. It didn't have, you know, the perfect lights and darks. It didn't have a lot of detail. But I wanted to do something where I take it to that next. Hey, Patty, better late than never, I always say. So glad that you're here. So I'm excited. And so Wendy got some new watercolor paper that turns into a box. Well, I hope it doesn't turn into the box while you're painting because, you know, think about it. You're doing like the highlight on her eye and all of a sudden it turns into a box. I would really want my money back, Wendy. 
<laughs> I know, I'm being silly. So here we are, Wednesday night, right? And uh, we're in November. Two weeks is Thanksgiving here in the States, and that's unbelievable. My guest says he got an old developers and Binks guns from painting cars in a Dree Gun HVLP set. Wow, that's pretty wild. Really great. <laughs> Patty, it's always great to see you. You are a great, great contributor to our live stream, so I'm always happy when you're here. And, you know, with the hair, you just develop it slowly, but it also gives you an excuse to go ahead and move around. Like right now, I can see with my medium mixture, I'm going to go ahead and work on her little tank top strap, I guess. I don't know whether it's a tank top or bra. I don't know. The photo doesn't go that far. Let's see. And you guys know, perpendicular and not parallel. One of the many Timisms that you encounter on my live streams. <laughs> Wow, 23 people. That's fantastic. Oh, wow. Thanks for that, Bill. I appreciate that. Very nice. Very nice that we're getting we're getting a nice group. Well, you know, it's a nice group. Whoever is here needs to be here. You know? So you bought a second Grex. Fantastic. You know, I love those little handles. Those are just really a lot of fun. I would love to... I would like to get one of those. Could I? Okay, here's a question for you guys. You know I like to modify my own airbrushes. So, Chris and Steve, here's a good question for you. And so, it's pretty exciting. So, let's see. So, here's the microphone. And tell me, can you put those little green handles from a Grex, and could you put it on a Badger? And I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. <laughs> it's called the Happy Trigger. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mike, for hitting that like button. I really appreciate that. That is so cool. So Steven says he's going to try tomorrow. That's exciting. So... Yeah, you know, wouldn't that be great to put that here? Like, pa pow right there. That would just, you know. Oh, already answered. Oh, so let me see. So Chris says, yes, you, you can. It's called the Happy Tigger. So you actually can do that? Now, here's what uh, Bill Kennedy says. There is a GU who is making custom handles. I believe he is making badger ones now. Interesting. Wow, I guess, ah, oh, David, always a pleasure, too short, but uh, always great to see you, my friend. So, Coast, oh, a trigger, yes, but uh, Chris, what I'm looking for is that green Grex uh, back that's under here. I wonder if that fits these bad boys, you know, the Badgers. And Mike says, not sure about a green uh of the Grex, but there was someone on Facebook group that's making 3D print a handle. Look at that. Oh, how cool is that? You see, I'm, I'm on the, you know, I'm, I got my ear to the grindstone or something like that. <laughs> I know it's the nose to the grindstone. I'm just being silly. So, okay. So let's go ahead here. So let's, let's work on this beautiful lady's hair here. Okay, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna start putting in some of the whites, you know? And remember, you wanna go aggressive slowly, right? You don't want to just, you wanna see if you can handle it with a least aggressive eraser, and if you can't, then you gradually go more aggressive if you have to, right? Because we're working on paper, and paper has a finite amount of material where you will start destroying the paper and that's no fun that's for sure 
A custom exotic carved wood grip. Wow, that's cool. Look at that. Look at that at a wood. That's something. Something, you know, it's like the great thing about airbrush people, you know, we're all so creative and innovative and everyone has so many different skill sets and we all come together, you know. And Mike, uh, Mike Deloach says, does the same thing as virtually universal as it mounts to the barrel behind the trigger. Wow, that's cool. Very cool. So, let's see now. Um, anyone looking for a harder and steam back? Spray Gunner has a used one. Wow, okay. Uh, so that's cool. Wow, look at that. Steve has enough tools. He has a technology, as uh, Lee Majors would say. So, I have... I have been watching the old Battlestar Galacticas. Remember that from 1978? Speaking of the 70s, that's just amazing. Now, the event disadvantage of working with paper is that you can't scratch with a razor blade, right? But the advantage is, is that, you know, it's much more... Uh, acceptable to pastel and and things like that so there are advantages and disadvantages to everything that we do and I like the the paper you know I really do uh, look at that so Chris calls it the trigger happy coast airbrush has them in seven colors in stock look at that Thanks, Chris. That's pretty cool. I'm going to look into that. That's really fantastic. So, yeah, I'm just, you know, interested to see what you guys all come up and girls come up with. I'm good with ideas when it comes to mechanics and mechanical things. Now, the application of, you know, doing it, that I leave to people much more talented in that area. So now you see I'm getting ready for more white pastel and getting rid of uh, edges that really aren't there, right? So I'm going to look at this lip, her bottom lip over to the right and there's basically no edge here. And it's interesting how we we want to have an edge, right? We always like, we're like, there's an edge there and our mind wants it to be there. So we're going to put it there, even if it's not there. And we have to be careful of that. One second rule is always going to keep us honest. Right? You always want, always want to be honest, you know? Uh, you know, in always one second rule, make sure that we are paying attention to our painting. So I got up at six o'clock in the morning, to, you know, actually five in the morning. I went to bed at 11, so that's six hours and that's usually good enough for me. So when I got up that early, the first question I asked was, who am I? <laughs> because <laughs> I don't get up that early. But how do you all feel about getting up early? Are you more productive as artists getting up early? Those who have full-time jobs, do you find that's time? If you get up earlier than have to, you know, rush and get ready to work, do you find that's creative time or times to think? What are some of your, hey, what's up there, Jake? Good to see you. How are you, my friend? So glad you're here. Jake is in the house, all right. Jake, I'm, I'm glad you're doing very well and feeling good. That makes me happy, you know. So Wendy says she doesn't function early. I'm actually a morning person, but I get 27. Wow, guys, you guys are fantastic. This is a record for 
Tim's live stream, you know, the Ink Flingers live stream. This is this is definitely a record, and I just want to say thank you, everybody, for being a part of it. 27, you know, they always say, don't despise the hour of small beginnings, you know, because everyone starts small, and, you know, for I've been doing live streams basically consistently since 2017, and there were some days where there was like one person talking to me, but I still showed up and still did it, and... You know, that's that's it. You know, you have to have that commitment and other people will follow. But, you know, it's going to happen, but you can't rush it. You know, you can't and you can't get discouraged, you know. So those who are starting live streams or starting YouTube channels, I just want to tell you to stick with it. You know, oh, Monty says he's too old to feel good in the morning. <laughs> hey, Rick, how you doing? But Monty, you do some really great artwork, so that's exciting. So do you find that you uh, work better at night, Monty? Is that better for you? Patty says, if I get in the art room that early, she wouldn't make it to a full-time job. <laughs> yes, when I was at Amazon, I was like that. I was always late and uh, until I couldn't get away with it anymore. And then Willie says, if I get up earlier, I think I'll go back in time. <laughs> Like the guy making the donuts, remember? Okay, I know we're going to always date ourselves. How many guys How many guys and girls know about the time to make the donuts commercial when he saw himself, caught himself at the door because he was like, time to make the donuts. I made the donuts and then he saw, that's what Willie is talking about. He'll have a space-time continuum or something like that, you know? <laughs> Mike remembers that. I think I was talking to someone, they're like, no, I never seen that commercial. I'm like, wow, that's unbelievable. So, Hillbilly Abel says sometimes he needs to get overtired to go into a deep creative mode. Very interesting. But then hit a wall and need to sleep. Then it's hard to duplicate to create. So your mind has to get into that sweet spot, right? Uh, so that that's pretty interesting. So, yeah, that's, you know... The creative mind is so complex, right, Hillbilly Abel? It's just so complex. And so Willie says that's him too. And uh, Wendy says she's older than any of you guys and she don't, you don't remember the Dunkin' Donuts. I think you guys don't have them in, in um, Texas. And Wendy, you are not older than everybody. And, oh, I remember it. Oh, okay. Uh, Wendy's 60 but she looks 39 actually 38 she looks amazing and I think it's because of uh, all the hard work hey Rick D how you doing 62 and Bradley 29 now he went back in time <laughs> and so Bradley you are you 29 or that's how Wendy looks. Wendy looks 29. Oh, I see. Good genes, yes. Good genes are very important. And we're just going to continue. So remember, use the least aggressive, and if it does the job, you don't have to tear the paper as much. So that always works. Remember, less pressure, lighter application, just like everything else. Not far behind, 58. Wow. And color graphics, Roy. Roy's a young guy at heart. That guy, he's he's something. Uh, Roy, Roy's a uh, lot of energy in that guy over there. You know, fellow New Jersey guy. And Wendy says uh, she looks forty but feels eighty. Brad says I got you all beat at sixty-three. Uh, you guys are all young at heart. You know, I I see you guys. I see everybody like people I went to college with. You all have a very young spirit. Good genes should be legal required for tight genes. <laughs> That's actually very funny, Mike. Uh, so, yeah, you guys are hilarious. That's actually a very good one. You made me laugh out loud. That's the one thing when you write LOL, that would actually be the case, that I actually did laugh out loud. 
Fred the Baker, Michael Vale was the time. Oh, wow, that's great. And uh, so Patrick says 49, but all the people said I have 36 and a heart. Oh, wow, that's great. And Rick D says he wants a recount. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of those years were mailed in. Am I right? That's what happened. You guys are funny. And 29 watching now. Yes, let's hit 30, guys. 30, 30. It could be incredible, you know? I think this could happen. This could definitely happen. That would be out of this world. So I would love to see that. Uh, I never seen 30 before. I never seen 29 before, but I would love to see 30, you know? And... I started with the airbrush diary. So, you know, you guys are going to start seeing a lot of videos by me, you know, regular videos, not live streams. And you're like, what's he doing? You know, why is he? I just want to get to know you guys a little more by you guys getting to know me a little more, you know. Chris says he's the youngest one here. Chris, what are you, like 17, 18? How young are you, my friend? <laughs> so here we are with the light mixture. And just moving around. So you see, we're doing the hair, but I'm not sticking with the hair. You know, I'm sticking with it by, you know, uh, paying attention, taking my time. But knowing that, you know, I have to paint the whole ensemble. Now right here, if we zoom in on her nose. Let's zoom in on her nose, guys. Let's make that happen. And, oh, there's her teeth. So we're doing good. Whoa, let's go this direction. Okay, so right here, there's a little bit of a, a light happening, and it's a reflected light under her nose, right by her nostril. And, you know, something like that is a small detail, but it goes a long way in describing the form. Remember, everything is turning towards the light and turning away from the light. Once it's turning away from the light, any light that hits it is going to be a reflected light, which means not coming from the main light source, which is the sun or the, or the window or, or what have you. It is light reflected off of that, off, off of another surface onto it. So it's reflected light is always weaker and it's always very soft edge usually uh, because of the nature of it. Light, when it travels, the longer it travels, the less powerful it is. And you'll know that is like when you, you take, uh, you know, now you'll know that when, oh, Bill says here, your channel deserves thousands. Thank you, my friend. From your lips to God's ears, uh, Bill, I appreciate that. So that makes me happy. Thank you, Bill. That's so cool for you to say. And Wendy's going to serve cake. So so right here, let's zoom back out. And you can see what that little thing did there. Just a little bit of uh, reflected light there. So right here I have my lamp, right? But watch as I take the same light source from the same direction. And look how more powerful it goes. Because it's traveling less distance. But I'm at the same angle. And I'm just going further and further away. And look how the colors start to duck darken because as light travels it goes through air and air will actually weaken it and it's really quite interesting so I find that really cool so so yeah we are I always say this you want to paint the light and not the likeness and so always work on that too that's another Timism because if you're painting the light and the light effects, the rest is going to happen automatically. You don't have to worry about it, which is really cool. Shame, shame on air. <laughs> oh, man, look at that. So that's pretty funny. And okay, so hair. Let's continue with her hair here. And we're just going to move around. And I do have some white pastel at the ready and the Fonz and Porter. So those are getting ready. And we're going to uh, work on that. So right now, 
Think of this as plowing the field, right? Because when you apply white on straight area that has ink on it, you're gonna have a shift, not necessarily a blue shift, but a color shift nonetheless, and it's not going to be pretty. So uh, you definitely want to work on that, you know? So that's basically very, hey, what's up, James? How you been? And James Loach said, just work on the art. Chat went off the rails a few minutes back. Oh, <laughs> that's true. We got a lot of uh, a lot of great action tonight, right? So that's pretty cool. And so it's always great to have good energy here. I always appreciate that. You know, I I work in my studio alone. I live alone, so this is always really so welcome you know you guys just don't know how much i appreciate your company oh just <laughs> got a car change <laughs> okay so now we'll just move that over there like so so sound is good everything is good guys so this is a technique that i use i like to use like an 80 grit sandpaper and and then I use a uh, Pit Pastel by Faber Castell, the medium, and it's really great because it's still kind of a it's still a very hard pastel. And those of you working pastel, you know that it is from a hard and soft, you know, and that designation means you know a lot when you're applying it to paper. So I'm just applying some of the white around i know i was working on the hair but while i'm here let me go ahead and just hit these areas real quickly ever so fast there we go and so she just has this really wonderful like the way her mouth opens you know it's it's just very cute and that was one of the things when I seen this uh, reference that I wanted to really touch on. And then you can definitely, when you're working, you, you want to realize that some areas might, you might have to, uh, you know, tone down as we look at it as a whole, right? And some you might be able to even put more white in, right? So those are important things to consider so yeah we're getting to the point where things are starting to develop really nicely and Mike says his innocence slipping away <laughs> that's pretty good and let's see so here we are we're just going to work on her hair here so it does get so why does the hair could be two reasons she could have highlights in her hair uh, also, it could be that the light, the hair is actually just poking away from her, her head and, and it's catching more light because it's further uh, away from her head. That could be it. We're not sure. I mean, we can't walk around her. So I think it has to do with, uh, with highlights a little bit. But it's always good to play light detective, right? You always want to be that person who's going to be like, well, why? Why is that? So you can understand it a bit more. And I may come in with the Fonz and Porter a little bit. And let's see. We'll just give it a try, right? What's the worst that could happen? Oh, my God. No. What's the worst that can happen? Nothing too bad. Fonz and Porter, you can do some really nice. And also, whenever you're working in pastel, if you, hey Todd, good to see you. How are you? Fresh from San Diego. How's the weather today? Bet it was like 82 degrees and sunny, right? The best weather in the history of the world. Right there. I would, I think it would be really an easy job to be a weatherman in, in that area, right? You just have to show up and say 82 and sunny. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Wendy's going to sell some fragrances. Look at that. So she's an entrepreneur. I always appreciate the entrepreneurial spirit. That's for sure. 
I know people say, get a real job, you know, and, you know, the real job is being an entrepreneur. I think that's so cool. It's, it's cool to, to have a regular job, too, and, you know, help out the economy and do great things. So both are good. And you see, in little by little, we're, we're taking this complexity of her hair and kind of uh, taking the uh, bite out of the dog, so to speak. And it's not that difficult. So with the white pastel, I can do large swaths of, air, swaths of area, right? Which is really helpful. And then I could go back in and, uh, but really the one second rule is going to either save us or we don't do the one second rule. It's going to be our downfall. So Wendy's getting rid of stuff. No, you are an entrepreneur. I think that's great, Wendy. I think we all should be selling things when we have a chance. If you have time, if you're not working like a lot of hours, then of course you don't have time. So Ed Todd says he's losing his mind. Oh man. <laughs> Mike says she's pure evil. Wendy, are you pure evil? Now who's pure evil? Let's see here. We're just going to work on this here. So you see how I'm always moving around and looking at, look at that. So that's, so Wendy is pure evil according to my guess. Now I might be reading into it. I might be, par you know, taking out a contest. I'm not sure, but we'll see. So you see how like, okay, I was a little overzealous with this white over here. And I tend to get overzealous here and there. And then I could just calm that down by tapping it with the kneaded eraser. And Bradley Smith, how you doing? Good to see you. Welcome back, you know. Wendy says she's an angel. You hear that? Uh, that's I can believe that. I can believe that. So I just finished my spinach, strawberry, and banana smoothie that was not bad guys so brad uh, chris says down at tamcon they tamco they held an airbrush portrait class and they used your idea of using a photocopy as a template wow that's cool very cool so that's really neat and uh so always cool that we could influence people am i right you know now I do something a little bit different and I, I start mine out with a digital, digital. So that's uh, something that, you know, those who take my class will actually learn that. Uh, that is like a real deep thing. So that is something, uh, but yeah, almost like what I do, Chris, almost, you know. An angel with cake sounds great. <laughs> so that must have been fantastic, Chris, down at Tamco, right? Did you have a lot of fun? Looked like you did. A lot of cool people, I bet. Especially in this day and age, right? You know, it's like time of people getting together is almost non-existent. I mean, a distant memory. I'm just going to put some lighter hairs here. So I'm using this Fonz and Porter, which is pretty cool. There we go. And so they say in life, showing up is 90% of life is showing up. So do you guys and girls feel that way, 90%? Uh, so as you do that, as you answer that question, I am going to be working on pulling out this hair from the darkness there. So medium mixture once again. I'm going to be coming in with the dark mixture shortly. 
and that and you see how the hair is developing at an ever slow rate and and I really love the way that the hair is coming is is uh, has shadow underneath it and atmosphere and I mean that from the actual photo reference Go. So you see how we're getting that that feeling of shadow and and light coming across, right? Coming across her, which is very important. And back to her hair, moving around. And there are no rules. Let's just face it, there are no rules. All rules can be broken. So I'm gonna take the white pastel and I'm just gonna go straight in. Why? Because there are no rules, right? I'm just, now probably haven't seen me do that before, but I have so many years of experience with white pastel. With pastel, you know, I was a professional pastel painter a uh, signature member of Pastel Society of America, won like 30 international shows and national shows with, with Pastel, and became quite known with Pastel. So, and then I decided to uh, give airbrushing a go. But, you know, the fact is that, you know, painting in Pastel all those years, of course, it's going to come into my work, you know. Uh, now, with that said, it's like going to a gym. If you go and get there, you probably work out. Interesting. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, Mike, got to gotta clock out and drive, drive a, a while. Oh, drive safe, Mike. Take care of yourself, and thank you so much for hanging out, and I really appreciate your time. So, uh, great to see you. And let's see, so Bill says, if you show up, that's important, right? So, and let's see, cool, very cool. Uh, so Bill says he's working on a nightmare job. Uh-oh, that's, that's always not good. And that was a hell of a transition, Tim. What made you switch up? You know, I don't know, you know, it just seemed like I was just... The hair is such a large area of white, and I think just fooling around, you know, with the little area just didn't work, you know? And there are times that you're going to do things and you're just the mother of necessity, right? You're just gonna say, nah, uh-uh, that's not working. It's not doing, you know, it's, it's actually too relaxed for what you are looking for, you know? It's too much of a, a slow roll and so watch I'm gonna apply it and then what I can do is I can go ahead and calm it down with the with the kneaded eraser so you can see that I'm just ramping things up here as Emerald would say bring it up a notch and that's what we're doing we're taking it up a notch here so so now I could take two things I could take my stump and I could you know pay attention to what's happening and pull this in and you can see how all of a sudden things start ramping up which is really great you know and let's see uh, now James says I asked younger people for a high school transcript not to see grades but attendance if you got bad grade and showed up every day and turned in all your homework you will be reliable and profitable that is a great insight thanks James it's so true you know so you guys really feel that showing up is 90% of life and oh what made me switch from good question I never really switched I, I still work in pastel but as far as my public persona it's basically airbrush right now um, now the thing is so when I was working in airbrush, I was I was trained as an oil painter at first, and then I went into airbrushing, and I was trained by, you know, very traditional airbrush, I mean, uh, oil painters. 
And so then I decided to look into the work of the 19th century French academics, you know, uh, even before that, you know, Jacques-Louis David, Jean-Augustin Dominique Angra, the French painters. And they always use a solid drawing and an underpainting. And I was working in pastel, but I wanted to have that. So I was working in just uh, brush and ink, you know, regular paintbrush and ink. And it was doing fine as an underpainting for my pastels, but it was kind of messy. And then I saw a video on YouTube of a guy doing a black and white of a woman in airbrush and I was like, holy Toledo, that's just really amazing. I think I could use that for my underpaintings. So I started doing that. I started using airbrush for my underpaintings and I started talking to airbrush guys and there was a lot of great artists out there who were just so gracious, you know, and you know, it was just just so, so wonderful, you know. The airbrush community really embraced me, you know, because I was this fine art guy coming into airbrush, and their first reaction was, why? Why are you doing this? And I'm like, I just love it, you know. And so slowly I started doing full-on airbrush paintings, and I was working in full color and, you know, doing large airbrush paintings and everything like that. And and then that's what happened. It just became, uh, it just sort of grew and just became a love, you know? And so it's really cool. And so James says, okay, and Chris says, oh, the switch from pastels to airbrush. Okay, I hope that answered your question, uh, Chris. That was a good question. And so now, we are working on, I'm gonna get the light mixture. I'm gonna try and smooth up this area here. Let's see. There we go. All right, so now as you see, I can go ahead and and darken some areas now that I put all this white here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expel the white mixture from this airbrush. So I'm still doing the two airbrush methods, but I'm going from light mixture to medium. Now I'm going to have medium and one having the dark mixture. And now we're going to really go into some of the accents uh, in the uh, hair and eyes and everything like that so dark mixture and if anyone uh, has the theme song of Darth Vader from the Empire Strikes Back that would be great because that's uh, that's the official so that is the official theme song of the dark mixture is the same as Darth Vader let's make sure remember you always do your first brush your first sprays never on your work Right? That's a Timism. Never ever. My guess is, Tim, have you ever used a fiberglass pens to erase on artwork? Very little. I really didn't like it very much. Oh, thank you, Patty. I appreciate that. So Bradley says, do you think you'll do any more color tutorials? I will. Uh, I will do them, but they will be not on the live stream, Brad. They will be uh, different, you know, they will be uh, on the regular videos. I'll do color, but not the live stream because I want this to be a place for people of all levels to really enjoy and just know what to expect. And I kind of like this, and you know, gets people at all levels to say, you know what, I can do that, you know, and I think I think that's really cool. Because with my ink mixtures, you don't have to worry about reduction or to reduce for you. You don't have to worry about color. And so it just makes airbrushing more enjoyable to so many people, Brad. And I don't want to lose that, you know. And that's, you know, the main, the main thing about, you know, which I find great about the, uh, the mixtures is that it really brings a lot of people's airbrush to life when they're ready to draw it out, you know? 
Oh, cool. So Rick says, hey, Tim, I was watching the airbrush uh, artist from Colombia. Yeah, Fonseca, Senor Fonseca. He's great. And he realizes all artists approach their work differently, but he will focus on one part of the portrait, say an eye, uh, and finish it completely before moving on to another post. It works for him, my thoughts. Wonderful question. Actually, that's like the question of the day. Okay, John Augusta Dominique Angra, what he said was that you want to paint the ensemble. You want it to feel like it was painted all at one time. So with that, you, so that's why you don't paint an eye, a nose, a mouth. You bring it all together. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you can't do it that way and be successful, but, you know, I feel that Angra is one of my mentors and I agree that when you're doing the whole painting, it comes together at one time, right? It's not something that, you know, you just move down. And when you move down and you do this eye and then you do this eye, you're not seeing the whole picture. Do you play chess? Hey, Mark, good to see you. How are you? And... Oh, wow. Monty says he's learning so much just watching me and can't wait to receive my inks. Yes, they are on their way to South Africa, my friend. And I gave you a little gift in there, too. And I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, so I feel that if you're painting, uh, you know, the eyes and nose, you're painting her as a whole and you want to see everything develop slowly, from light to dark, because then you're seeing all the relationships, right? So let's say you want to paint the forest, and you're going to just work on that one tree. Well, you're not going to know how dark that tree is until you see all the trees in context. So you might do one tree, and it looks really fantastic, but when you do the tree, let's say, you know, way over to the left, you're going to see that tree is too light or too dark, you know? Oh, you're very welcome, Monty. Uh, oh, thank you, Brad. That's crazy. That's wonderful for you to say that. You are always the best. And I'll tell you, Brad is my student for a long time, Brad Mummery, and he is just amazing. Just unbelievable. And thank you, Chris. And, uh, you know, you should see me with the inks. I'm there counting drops, you know. I'll do, let's say, six bottles at a time. So I'll do the... the and I'll make sure I do the exact amount of drops. So everyone who has a light mixture knows what to expect with a light mixture, medium mixture, dark mixture. You know, it's really great, you know. And so James says he prefers working as a whole because I believe in the painting relational shapes. Exactly. You know, that's what you want. You want to see relational shapes. Now, I'm not downplaying, you know, anyone or, you know, uh, Mr. Fonseca. He's an amazing artist. We all learn differently, but that's my philosophy and where I got it was from, you know, Angra, you know, French academic, uh, paint, no, French neoclassical painter. He studied with Jacques-Louis David, and what's really interesting, if you do the genealogy of teachers who studied with me, who I studied with, and my teacher and studied, goes right back, even genealogy too. Anga and Jacques Louis David, so that's pretty interesting. So if you guys study with me, you're actually getting a watered down version, but you're still getting a version of what was given to uh, Jacques Louis David and uh, and Angra. You know, it's like almost a little piece of their classes are spilling into these live streams and in the classes you take with from me, which is really fantastic, you know? Oh, wow, look at that, Mark. So, you hey, doing a beautiful uh, picture for your daughter is far more important. That's incredible. You must be her hero, huh? Eeyore. So, that's great that you're doing that. I think that's really incredible. Now, there's some dark. See, I'm in the dark mixture. Eeyore. <laughs> I knew what you meant, though, my friend. 
So thank you everybody for saying such nice things about the inks. If anyone is interested in my inks, I can put a link in the I have a link in the description, right? And I can go ahead and put that right here. And there I sell the brushes and the paper and everything. So you don't have to look for it. You get exactly what I use if you work in this technique. So I makes it a lot easier for you guys, you know? And you don't have to worry about finding it on YouTube and everything. There you go, guys. And Chris says, uh, Tim's classes have taken him to a new level. Wow, thank you. Yeah, he's doing really good, I have to say. So if you get a chance, uh, definitely give that a shot. You'll really love it. Uh, you know, those inks if you haven't. And I'll get that right out to you. There we go. So you see how I can just little dagger strokes, right? And just the softness of the hair. See, I'm, no, I'm in no rush, right? There's no rush, there's, there's no time limit. The only time limit I have is beauty, you know? It is the depiction of beauty. So with the dark, no, this is the medium mixture. So let's go back with the dark mixture, okay? Switching on and off, which is good. And so right now it's at 1045. Look how fast the time's going, guys. Mark says, Tim, whenever I get the opportunity, I am 100% going to buy some training. Oh, that's great, you know. I'm thinking for the holidays of doing a project via video download. And so that's, you know, something I'm thinking. It's just so hard to find the time, you know. It really is. Because I started doing the airbrush, uh, the airbrush diary, which I think is successful. I think people are liking it, I hope. But I really did it to get more comfortable in front of the camera, to you guys get to know me, and to give back even more. Like today, I'm just working on a video. Uh, should be up tomorrow, which is on organization. So I struggled with that in the past, and I still struggle. But any little victory I want to share with you, you all, you know. Time is flying, Steve. Thank you for that. And uh, Chris says, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh, see, pay, uh, you know, <laughs> Brad, you still have to pay for the tuition. You guys are funny." So now I'm going to work on some nice dark so i have my pure ref and when you're a pure ref it always sits on the top of your your desktop on your computer and i can blow up different areas see that little perpendicular and not parallel it's all about edge work it's all about how things uh buttress up against each other you know one value how does it how does it carry to the adjacent value, that sort of thing. And it's not easy. You know, we have the dark mixture right here and we're looking for dark accents in the hair. And you really have to stick with it, you know. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's true, I do. If you're, anyone who has studied with me knows that I do, I do work you, right? I do, uh, I do, uh, Put you through the paces but the work that you all do is just out of this world so it's definitely worth it and me and uh, Roy are working on Sophia Loren and that's just coming out amazing just breathtaking so I'm happy about that I'm always proud of my students because I do work as hard but it's worth it in the long run, right? <laughs> well, definitely on camera these days, you can't do anything, you know? Right? That's for sure. Just the stuff that, you know, we used to do as kids, you know? 
If anyone I was caught on camera, you know, this is my God. We used to throw things at things. And you were just mischievous kids, you know. But if that was caught on camera, holy Toledo. So with the dark mixture, I'm just going to try and get some dark accents. See how I'm moving around? I'm not just staying with the hair. I'm just keeping things active. So with the dark mixture, I'm playing more for keeps here. And as you can see, I could bring a little more attention and dark accents here and there. See, interesting how it just comes out here and then just stops and then starts this part. Not sure what's happening, but I have to pay attention to it because in reality, it's part of her likeness, right? Even though it is like hard to understand. <laughs> Roy says his brain still hurts. <laughs> yeah, I did work you hard on Monday. That's for sure. I'm like, oh my God. Yes, I did. And I worked Brad hard on Monday as well. So I have two new students this week. So I'm excited about them as well. And so what I'm thinking of doing in the in the future, defund the media. Oh my goodness, look at that. Have cell phone cameras in his face. Oh, oh wow, yeah, that must stink. So yeah, I hear that. But I thank you. Chris, for all you do, you know, you are amazing. And uh, thank God for people like you, sir. And let's go ahead and continue just like that. We're going to put in some dark accents. We're going to move around. And a little bit darker here. So I'm really getting happy that we are starting to really get a sense of her likeness. Now, it just happened. It's not something I was looking for, you know? Not media, it's the public that hates. Yeah, that's true. It's, I hope that things get, uh, how do I say, Chris? Things heal, right? I hope things heal on, and I think that would be wonderful. And it will, it just takes time, you know? It really does. But yeah, during the interim, it must be really difficult. Okay, so I see we're just working on the hair, you know, and the eyes here. So there are lights within the darks that you have to look for. And that's what I'm doing now with the neat eraser. I wouldn't be doing this with a rough eraser because it would be too harsh. So we want to make sure that we stay, you know, uh, stay subtle, you know. So that's really important. And now with this, you don't want to tap it. It won't work like the pastel. Pastel sits on the surface, right? When you put it on the surface, it sits on it. When you tap it, you're just taking it away little by little. So I'm going to go back with the medium mixture. And let's just blend this in a little bit here. So you see how I'm just working the hair back and forth and not going too crazy and just uh, letting it happen, but paying attention and being tenacious, right? That's what we're doing. We're being tenacious when it comes to hair. And I'm not looking, and you'll notice I'm not a uh, literal hair. I'm not looking to get every little hair. That's not even a goal of mine. The hair in its place is wonderful. It's a, it's a, the hair is like, how do you say, it is a supporting actress to this, right? So you wanna make sure that you don't let it become too important. And that's the thing, if we were painting it piecemeal, if I was just looking at that hair, then I would just see the hair, but I wouldn't see in context of everything and I wouldn't see if it was getting too busy and taken away from the star of the show which are these eyes and this mouth so that's a disadvantage of that whole technique of 
working an area like a billboard painter, right? Just going straight down. That's what a billboard painter used to do. So, um, like I said, you know, it's all how you're taught. I'm very classically trained, you know, so we're trained in a very pragmat pragmatic approach, you know, which is really important. Besides that, I could watch Tim or Steve Lane from my car. <laughs> Uh, no direct internet video posting or calls in and out. Oh, signal jammer, jammers. Oh, I see. Um, oh, wow. Interesting. So, just to continue calming area down. So, you see how I can calm down her hair and just continue moving about. Now, since we're working on hair, it doesn't mean that we can't bounce back and forth. So right now I want to work on her, her neck here. I'm in the medium mixture. And I'm gonna go into, there you go. Try and find the grain of the skin. It's very important to try and find that grain of the skin because just like wood, there is a grain of the skin. And it really wouldn't be found in any kind of, uh, any kind of shields or any kind of uh, stencils. You're really gonna find it in the way that the, the tones and values uh, actually uh, go next to one another like right here it's slightly darker right here see just right there it's slightly darker and that will tell you basically what's happening with with the skin you know where it's being pulled in what direction and then you can pump the trigger and then you can sort of move around and and get different areas and and really see, you know, see it for what's happening. Now here, if we go back to her nose, we can see that it's a little sharper edged right here, right? I'm in the medium mixture. And then right here, it really softens up dramatically. So I'm gonna use my least aggressive eraser and I'm just gonna try and soften this up with the one second rule, mind you. And you see that? I really want that soft over here. See that? So um, softening it up, it's not really describing the form, it's just describing the way the light is sort of dissipating as it goes up here. And let's see if the needed eraser can do the job. And it seems to be. And then this comes up here. And then another reason why you wanna work on the painting uh, slowly and together is that you can see the values right so I can see that this is a light value coming right here uh, on the top of the eyelid and I can actually look and see where is that value and I can say oh okay that value is like right here so when I go ahead and lighten this up I'm not guessing because I can actually see where that value is now that works in the later stages of the game. You can see things like that. So you see, I can go in here and just establish that shape. And then I can come back with my medium mixture and I could calm that down and reiterate that shape. See that? And also I could take my knock eraser and I can go ahead and pull that down, just like so. And so you see, I'm really working the values and also the relationships of those values and the edges of how those values buttress up against one another. And so now that I do that, I could come back in and get the adjacent value right here. 
So you believe it's going to be Thanksgiving here in the States already, guys? I know my Canadian friends, like uh, like Brad and Patrick, you guys had yours, I think, last week, right? Oh, so we have Boricua in the house. Very cool. Very cool. So, you know, uh, Mr. Chris, I made a pretty good uh, uh, red beans and and right, yellow rice the other day. I think you would be proud. And I made good empanadas. <laughs> Very good empanadas. So Puerto Ricans, they make some incredible food, that's for sure. So, you know. And again, you just want to continue until you get that right. Right? It's a very subtle light shift right there. And then it starts over here on the bottom, right? Then there's a, a light shift on the bottom. It gets a little lighter there. And those little things, you know, when you pay attention to them are really going to help you. And you can see that it's much darker here, but right here, this gets pretty powerful as far as a light here. You know why? Because the light's coming from the upper left and this is facing the upper left on this corner. So that's why it's really getting that blast of light. There we go. And we always will come back, but I, we're setting up for white pastel there. Also over here, I can see that it's a little overzealous with this uh, dark edge here. So we can pull that down like that. And so it's a lot of cleaning up and stuff like that at this stage. We're getting close to uh, maybe one more week and we're going to be done with this, this portrait of this beautiful blonde woman. And that's exciting. I had a fun time painting her. Let's see. There we go. And same thing here. This is a little strong as far as the edges. So I'm going to soften up that edge there. Because as this is turning towards the light, right? Uh, the light is washing out the value. So that's why you see that the edges sort of uh, weaken up over here as well. But right on the edge, very interesting because of the way that the uh, orb orbital ridge actually turns towards the light. You're going to see a little bit of light on the edge there. And red beans and yellow rice. <laughs> Very cool. So I really, uh, really love uh, Caribbean food. It's really fantastic. And big fan of Mexican food. You see on my YouTube, on my Facebook channel, I'm always showing my chicken empanadas. Those are always great. I wish I could make some for everyone today. That would be great. This would be great if we could uh, paint, talk about art, and have chicken em chicken empanadas. No, no, I'm sorry. Chicken chicken quesadilla. No, chicken enchiladas. Okay, sorry. Yeah, with some of Wendy's cake. That would be perfect. That would be a perfect live stream. I think like, you know, when things go away with this COVID-19, people are going to have live streams on location and I'd like to do that one day have an on lo on location live stream wouldn't that be great no I don't I don't see your name in colored highlight though Mike maybe it's just on your end I'm not sure and so you see on this side I have the dark mixture. I'm going to come back in with the dark mixture here. And let's reiterate this because I can see a balance shift here. And it's a little less dark on here. And I just want to make sure that this eye is balanced. Now, there's going to be more detail in this eye because it's in the light and this is in the shadow. Remember, 
In the lights, the details of shouts, and in the shadows, details of whispers. And that's always going to help you if you find that your shadow areas are getting too powerful. Yeah, they have to uh, basically adhere to the, uh, the laws of nature of light. So in the shadow areas, all the, sh all the lights are never going to be as bright as the lights in the light area. And the same thing in the shadow area, uh, you know, all the values are going to be much closer to one another. Oh, Wendy says coffee. Yes, coffee. That is so. And and Mike, I don't want you to get hammered more, you know. Uh, so let's see. Just so the white of the eyes here are really not white at all, especially on this side, right? And even so, I just think, you know, this area is looking much lighter. But we'll see. We're not going to. See, the thing is, you don't get emotional about your painting. If you see something's not working, you just step back, assess the situation, and return to it. So never never get like, oh my God, it doesn't look right. Let me continue working to it till it's death. And then before you know it, you're at the point of no return. And again, you know, if we stop and look at the relationships, and then things will really calm down for us. And that's good. You know, you want them to calm down. And they will. And we'll go. Oh, Chris says it improves the work. Maybe in the eyes of the beholder. But I don't... <laughs> Under the influence, I'm not sure. Maybe if, if you're an abstract painter, Chris, I don't know. But this stuff, oh my God. It's, you start looking like a Picasso painting, but not on purpose. I just love how, you know, how we can slowly build up this skin texture, right? This tapestry. The skin texture kind of pops out, right? The kind of, the skin texture just sort of comes together. So don't worry about it. It's going to happen automatically. Super soft edge here. I love the way this dark comes out to her chin. It just has a lot of character to to her, you know. And still, I'm in the medium mixture again. I just want to deepen the darks here. They just seem like they can get much deeper there. And let's go even further with the dark mixture. And you know, Raul, how's it going? Uh, Raul says, Tim, you should, uh, this special event live stream at Badger headquarters and we all get a tour. That would be amazing. You know what? When things calm down, I know, I know I can make it happen with Ken if you guys want to see that. So I'm definitely due for a trip to check out Badger and that would be amazing. Yes. I can see that for 2021. Definitely. What a great idea, you know? Oh, Brad, thank you. Brad says she's looking great. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. You know, slowly and surely, you know, it's the whole thing. You know, it's like I'm painting the hair as a whole and not getting emotional and just letting things happen. So right now we have some dark, dark accents right here. See that? Just pulling out some of that dark accent. And then this is like really too strong. So definitely weaken some of this, some of these uh, values need to come closer to one another here. And then we can continue like with the hair, you know, we're going back and forth and we're just uh, moving around and that's what we need to do. Let's see. And 
little little light changes here and there. But doing that pastel was really important because it helped to uh, keep me from just like, you know, just noodling it to death, you know, which is not good. And as you see, we're going to go in with some individual hairs here. And the most important thing is when you're working with hair, always make sure that you know the direction of the hair, right? That's important. The direction of the hair is key. So always make sure that you have that. And, oh, well, thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you. And I, you know, I love it that you guys are here and hanging out with me. And, uh, oh, we'll take, and they'll take Steve Leahy uh, so they can steal him away from Iwata. <laughs> and Raul says, Tim, do you think Ken would make a limited edition airbrush for us with your name on it? I would love that. If you guys could ever write them and just tell them about that, that would go a long way. And uh, I'll tell you, um, so many people have said that, you know, Raul, and uh, that's very, that really means a lot to me. Like I always say, you know, this airbrush, when you get it from the manufacturer, is not the airbrush you get. This is, this is a powerhouse with the changes that I made. So when I tell you guys, yeah, get the Extreme Patriot Arrow, but a little asterisk, like, wait, you got to make some changes to it because uh, the, the modified airbrush is not the same as the one that you would normally get. So, yeah, that would be fantastic. That would have all the modifications already, Raul. That would be great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> Timothy John Luke Smith, right? That would be funny. Yeah, it would have to continue around the other side. <laughs> or you get two airbrushes. One would say Timothy John, and the other one would say Luke Smith. And uh, so you would have to get two airbrushes, you know. Oh, you hear that, Raul? Your cake. Uh, Wendy, your cake has been on Raul's mind all day. How's that? That's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I was at the supermarket today, and I did good. I wasn't hungry. I think I ate something really terrible before and boring before I went to the supermarket. So my appetite was like that. And I've seen all these, like, cake mixes. So what got me was kept saying, like, I don't have eggs. I don't have eggs. And that's how I kind of psyched myself out. I could have bought eggs, but, you know, I knew that, you know, I I wanted to make cake so badly, but, you know, I stopped myself. It's not easy. You know, I don't got anyone to, yeah, just put PSA on it. <laughs> yes, you know what? Definitely. So, you know, that's something I can do with the software on my live stream. I can do him, you know have him on video and me and that would be great and just have like this friendly wonderful q a and it's you know he's a funny guy i mean you guys know ken right he just cracks you up and he's so down to earth you know and i got to hang out with him several times when he came to new jersey and we just laughed the whole time he's just like talking to a buddy you had for like 40 years honestly and he really cares, you know, and that's one of the things. And I, I know you all know how much he cares, you know. He, he really is a caring guy. And uh, that's why if anything's wrong with your airbrush, he always takes care of you. So that's why, you know, I want to, I mean, uh, Badger is a real friend to this channel and a sponsor. And I, I feel very honored. I can't think of a, a better company to be part of. Just like you guys. I can't think of a better group of people than you guys right here, you know? Hey, Third Floor Radio Show. How are you, my friend? What's going on? Good to see you. I love that name, Third Floor Radio Show. Now, do we know each other? Uh, from Facebook or is 
uh, you knew here because that's a great name. Now, do you have a radio show on YouTube that we can all check out? That would be wild. Oh, Tone. How's it going, Tone? Good to see you. All right. Very happy to see Tone. Tone's in the house. So thank you so much for stopping by. So I know you're working hard over there in Queens, right? I'm going to come in with the Fonz and Porter a little bit. So you see how I'm just working back and forth. I'm not worried about, you know, uh, building Rome in one day, right? I'm just playing around, talking to you guys, sticking with this hair thing, you know, not, not getting emotional about it. If it looks terrible, stick with it and it won't look terrible, right? And that's the thing, you know? So Tone is here, that's cool. Kind of drew me a curveball with that, right? That's that's pretty interesting. So we had such a, we're having such a really productive live stream with so many people here today and great comments and just on this Wednesday, you know? Wednesdays have been my favorite days of the week for quite some time is because of you guys. And I love talking about airbrush and learning from you guys. You guys tell me all kinds of stuff. I always say to my students, I learn so much from my students. It's unbelievable. Uh, they have a way of looking at things. And, you know, just with this fresh way of looking at it, you know, uh, just this, you know, this new perspective. And that just, you know... That's great, you know. Super Lag, how you doing? That's another great name. <laughs> so Super Lag, tell me about that. What does that name signify? The lag in your live stream, perhaps? That's pretty cool. Raul says, Wendy, uh, he's on a 1,500 calorie a day. And he had to make small soda. Instead of your delicious cake, I had hummus and baby carrots. Now that's pretty good. Look at that. So I applaud you on your, on your journey, your diet journey, you know? So, so that's Raul, okay, cool. So very, very cool. So you're dieting, so that's why you have that uh, craving for cake, right? That's, it's rough when you're doing that. It really is, Raul, but I applaud you. So, so neat. Hummus is amazing. All the dental work I had, I really am not, I can't have baby carrots. Wish I could. If I do the baby carrots, I would have to put them through like uh, a food processor where I make them smaller and I enjoy them that way and I put them on my salad. But yeah, baby carrots are great. I miss those days. Raul loves cake. <laughs> you know, so if I was thinking like, what would be like my dessert, my decadent dessert of choice? Well, in New York City, there's this place called the Cafe Europa. It used to be on 57th Street between 7th and 8th Avenue. It's down by the Art Students League where I used to study. And there I had the most amazing Black Forest cake. It was chocolate and chocolate mousse and it had, oh my God, it had raspberry filling. And I had that with like a cup of cappuccino and sitting there looking at the New York City afternoon traffic. And that was like one of my best cake moments. I mean, it never could replicate that. Everything was just, you know, in perfect harmony that day. I would find myself in New York City studying with some great artists and uh, it was just really cool. So you see how we're just developing her little by little, building up the lights. And then we can build up some of the darks here because little darks are here. Now, when you ever put the air down and you just you just a little bit, you know, you're putting air down and it's just not giving you that right amount of air. Usually that's tip dry. So let's zoom in on, on this here so I can show you. This is 
Tim's live stream technical moment. I need a theme song for that. So, and then we're just gonna go here and you see that? Look at that guys and girls. Whoa, we're getting, there we are. Okay, depth perception issues. Okay, so right there, you see that little bit of tip dry. Not everyone has nails, I don't, I cut them, but still, uh, you know, I still have enough nails and I could just pull that out. And you see, there we go. Now, when I go ahead, that actually solved the problem. Just a little bit of tip dry on the very tip there will go a long way. So don't force it. You know, when you feel it's not, whatever you do, do not try and resolve it by pulling back further on the trigger. That's never going to be helpful. Okay? I just want you guys to know that. Very important. So... Chris Garcia says, we're all on diets because Wendy doesn't share her cakes with us. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. And uh, uh, Monty says, at this point, any cake will do. <laughs> yeah, the pumpkin pies are all over, guys. And those of you who are not in the States, this is pumpkin pie season here. You know, Thanksgiving, October, November. So there's a lot of pumpkin pies everywhere. And I was tempted. They have pumpkin pies that are ready to bake. They had ready to eat pumpkin pies. They had sweet potato pie, which really looks like and tastes like pumpkin pie. And if I'm not told, I can't tell a difference. Uh, but yeah, so I was just, I was full. So I was by myself at the supermarket. So I was pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. But I'm not going to be happy when I want something to eat late at night, right? So the happiness is going to be out the, out the door. So <laughs> so that's so you see, when I put down the pastel, I can say, ah, oh, I went a little crazy here. And then I could come in and dust here with the medium mixture. And we're not going to do too much light mixture at this stage, right? Because of, you know, where we are. You know, we're going to go with the medium. We might have a, a call for some some light mixture later, but right now we're just going to go with the two airbrush system going back and forth. Okay, so now what we can do is we can... Oh, look at that. Patty uses a damn sponge, and she's poked herself too many times. Ouch. I poked myself just yesterday. I don't know how I did it. I forget. But it really hurt. I mean, like, really, like, ow! That that was not good. Right in the finger. I'm going to put some pastel here. And then use my kneaded eraser and calm down anything that's a little overzealous. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road a lot of times. So you're going to see that I'm going to start putting in some, some lights right next to this dark value here because when one area is three-dimensional and it goes away from the light when another area comes up that's where that progression of light and dark stops and that's where it picks up again so it's almost like uh, you know forms bumping into each other so when there's a separate form it's going to start a new progression of light from from light to dark meaning from the upper right hand corner to the lower left hand corner light to dark and so that's one of the things we're always going to be searching for and there's little bit of lights inside these dark so and that's and the thing is not to uh, get overwhelmed just stick with it like we stick with stuck with the hair, right? And always know that we have our kneaded eraser and we can calm things down. And let's see anything I missed here. Uh, hey Brad, have a great night, my friend. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out. And I want to know how that portrait commission you were working on, how did that come out? Send me a JPEG, my friend. And uh, and Brad says, do it enough time, you have a tattoo. Very, very true, yes. And Raul says, Tim with pastels, what do you top coat or seal your project with? 
Never. Uh, I was trained as a pastel painter to uh, never ever use any kind of fixative and that was like a no-no and uh, and that was drilled in me and the reason being is once you put pastel under glass it will stay as fresh as a day it was painted for hundreds of years there are paintings in pastel done in the 1600s that still look fresh as if they were just painted now remember, pastel doesn't have any kind of medium in there, right? So it doesn't have any turpentine or any kind of uh, anything like paint has. So it will retain its, uh, it's just pure pigment with just a little bit of binder. And the second reason is when you are uh, painting in pastel, when you spray something on it, you'll change the texture. So you'll have to fix the texture because the fixative will actually uh, make changes. It'll darken the value and it also will, uh, will give you this problem with texture. Now the only time I ever use a fixative is let's say I'm doing a pastel painting and it gets overloaded, right? Sometimes the surface will get overloaded and when that happens, uh, it won't take any more pastel it's just it's loaded with pastel and you spray a little bit on there and it gives you maybe one and a half more layers if you need to go back in there if you're not done with your detail but I was I studied with uh, Harvey Dinnerstein one of the preeminent uh, pastel painters of our time and just amazing you know so I hope that, that answers your question, my friend. Great questions tonight, Raul, that's for sure. I like to plow the field. So if I see a light here, I'll plow the field with the eraser first, as so, and then I'll put in the white pastel. Seems to take it a little bit better. And maybe I could get a little stronger here. This is like a real strong area of pastel. So I'll just put that right there as so. And just a little bit right there. And then we can tap that away. While looking with the one second rule, then you could really keep playing. So we're still working on that hair. I mean, still working on that hair moving around and oh Monty has to get ready for work and you have an African gray those are great birds he wants out oh man so it's great to talk to you Monty and thank you so much and let me know when those uh, those inks get to you I can't wait to see the wonderful work you're going to be doing and uh, so that's fantastic you know and Mike S says, after all the stainless steel welding burns and stainless steel brushes stabbing his fingers, an airbrush needle doesn't bother him. You and Willie both, huh? Wow. So, yeah, your jobs as welders, yeah, I can imagine all the little, like, all the pain that you go through, right? You know, working with that hot flame. Holy cow. That's for sure. And Mike says, back just in time to close it out. Oh, great. So glad you're back, Mike. Made it safe. That's wonderful. Uh, Brad says, great live stream. Have a good night, Brad. Always great to see you, my friend. Look at this. It's 1127. I always give you to 1130, you know, unless I'm trapped under something heavy, you know. <laughs> then I might say, okay, this live stream's ending. i um, trapped under something heavy. Uh so Micah says, Willie, do you have white spots on your arms from the stainless steel splatter? And Wendy says, yes, the live feed at her house. Yeah, that would be great, definitely. We have to do a, a collab with Wendy to get her to move some of those fragrances, right? She, uh, you might have so many fragrances everywhere. It probably smells amazing. So you guys remember Crazy Eddie? You know, his... Christmas in July 
you know, where everything must go, you know, that's, do something like that, Wendy, what do you think? And, let's see, so next week will be the last episode of this, this particular painting, so exciting conclusion, same bat time, same bat channel, or same ink time, same ink channel. And so Patty's signing off. Got to get some sleep. Yes, work at five. Holy Toledo. God bless. I hope you have a beautiful night, uh, Patty. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate that. Steve Leahy, have a great evening. Thank you for your support, my friend. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Brad, uh, for your support. You guys are just amazing, you know. Uh, just have to say thank you, everybody, for your support tonight. Uh, so thankful. I mean, I really can't, really can't express, you know, the gratitude I feel for, you know, for tonight and making it special for me. And, you know, uh, I would watch and thank you, Chris, for your support, my friend. Really appreciate that. Um, just great. And uh, yeah, see, Willie would watch it. It would be an extravaganza. You know, you can do some of your watercolors and, you know, maybe do a, a little Procreate uh, lesson in there too. Wendy, it would, it would be amazing, you know. James, great to see you, my friend. Thank you. And good night. We made it to 1130. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for everything. This will go down as one of my faves. And I think we hit record with concurrent viewers and everything. So... How exciting is everything? I just can't. Out of my heart, I hope you have a great night and watch out for tomorrow. I'll have a video on organization skills, really get us, get our mind really in. And thanks, Bill, over there. I appreciate it, Mike S. and everyone. Take care, everybody.